We already had some big news today, and that was the one everyone was waiting for. Where was Juan Soto going to go if he was going to go anywhere? And it looks like he's headed to San Diego. Chris, a monumental trade because of who Juan Soto is. He's only 23 years old. He's already been a World Series MVP. And when you look at the numbers he has put up throughout his career, 23-year-olds with his kind of talent and two and, a year, two and a half years left of control simply don't get traded. But when he turned down a 15-year, $440 million, Dollar offer from the Nationals. The Nationals made it clear that they were looking to deal him. The teams that ended up being the most interested or getting the closest were the Dodgers, the Cardinals, and the Padres. As you said, the Padres execute the deal. And you look at that Padres lineup right now, and you look at where they are in the West, even though they trail the Dodgers by 12 games, they're firmly in a wild card position, and they become a very dangerous team. Soto has that ability to not only hit homers, Chris, he he also take walks. He's a guy who has more walks in his career than strikeouts. And for someone who's a power hitter, that's saying a lot. Yeah, Fernando Tatis Jr. is on his way back from injury. Manny Machado's in this lineup. And now you add Juan Soto. Luke Voigt, too, former Yankee, is also in this Padres lineup. So they just got exponentially better. Yeah, A.J. Preller, their GM, likes to make moves. He likes to gamble. He likes to add players. They added Josh Hader for the bullpen right. just the other day. Previously, They've made trades for you, Darvish, and Snell. Machado, you mentioned, they signed him to a $300 million deal when no one really had him targeted to go there. Hosmer signed a $140 plus million deal. Of course, he could have been part of this deal, but he declined it. And Chris, that is as glossy a resume as you will ever see for a 23-year-old. That's what happens when you debut at the age of 19. And I think the Padres should be amazingly excited about the fact that they have a generational talent for three postseason runs. If you're a Padre in that clubhouse right now, as you mentioned, Luke Voigt, someone that we know well from his Yankee career, you're looking at your lineup, you're looking at what your GM has done, and of course you're dreaming about getting to October. You're dreaming about upending the Dodgers in the West. I don't think they can catch the Dodgers, the 12-game deficit, but they can get into the dance and make things very interesting for other teams, make teams uncomfortable. And when you watch Soto at the plate, Chris, it's interesting. This year he's hitting 246. If you look at that 246 average, then you're really not a smart baseball <laughs> fan because he's having a down year, yet his OPS is close to 900. He's got 21 home runs, and his OPS since 2018 is the second highest in baseball. It's 966. And the guy who holds the top spot, Mike Trout, who is considered the best player in baseball. So now, yeah. just an unbelievable addition to an already solid lineup. And here's a look at this lineup. Profar, Machado, Soto, Tatis Jr., Bell, Voigt, Cronworth, Nola, and Grisham. And Jack, here's something else, just a little pushback. Okay, because A.J. Preller did let go of a lot of prospects, a lot of top prospects, three top ten picks, by the way, and a starter he had in his rotation this year in Mackenzie Gore. So here's my thing. He's got two guys locked into $640 million in Machado and also Tatis Jr. Now, that Tatis Jr. contract is backloaded, of course, but the free agency for Soto hits in 2025. Do you think he's thinking, all right, if things don't work out, I could spin him and get some prospects back? I mean, this is just a great deal on so many levels for the Padres. I'm going to try and bring this into everyday life, even though we can't bring $640 million plus <laughs> into everyday life. How many people are thinking about their mortgage payments for 2025? We're really not. We're trying to enjoy 2022, 2023, and 2024. So I think you're right. That's what the Padres are doing right now. They have Soto for the next two-plus seasons. Seasons. Revel that, relish that, enjoy that. You win a World Series, you're going to consider this a victory. He gets you to a World Series, you're going to consider that a victory. Chris, I think you worry about free agency as it gets closer, but if things don't work out and it doesn't appear as if you can re-sign him, you can spin him in that final year. Let's say the Padres flop, and let's say they're the team that's out of it exactly two years from now. They could try and trade Juan Soto. They won't get the haul back that they gave up, but they'll still get a lot of good players. And I'm glad you mentioned those young players, because we should point out that the Nationals, in deciding that they weren't going to be able to keep Soto, had to get a haul back. And this is as tactical 
talent laden a package as I think you have ever seen traded at the deadline, Chris. Some talented, highly touted young players. You mentioned Gore, the lefty. He started this year 4 and 1 with a 1.50 ERA. Hassel is their number one prospect. Abrams, the shortstop, was the sixth pick in 2019. Woods is their number three prospect. Susana is 6'6 pitcher, averaging a strikeout and a half per inning this year, and he's listed as their number 14 prospect, but really is a, is a comet moving up on that list. So, yes, they were able to get a haul of young talent back. 